Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even certain prayers, you are not supposed to do them a certain way. There are prayers you do certain ways. There are different kinds of prayers because you are controlling a different realm. You're working from a different place. But if you want to deal with everything the same way, it will be difficult. You'll be crying, God, why? God, why? Why? 20 years later, why? Why? 40 years later, God forbid. Somebody say, God forbid. God forbid. You don't want that to be you, but that's yeah. what can happen. You see somebody 50 years, I'm still believing God. But you're not changing your method. You know, anyone who says that God, I am waiting on God, is saying God is a liar. One of the greatest men that ever lived in this nation, he was a powerful televangelist, but he was a prophet. His name was A.A. Allen. A. Allen said something very phenomenal. He said, the word of God is like a recipe. You get the recipe for cornbread, you put it in. If you pull out turkey, that's a wrong recipe. <laughs> something went wrong. You don't put in, in the oven <laughs> cornbread and you pu pull out bread. <laughs> it's close, but it's not the same thing. The word of God is exactly true and it says what it does and it does what it says. Amen. As a child of God, you have to know that without a shadow of a doubt. It's not just something encouraging. It is the reality and the truth of God Almighty himself. Everyone else has perspective, but God has truth. Look at your neighbor, say, everybody has perspective. Everybody has perspective. But God has truth. But God has truth. That is why the Lord Jesus said, I am the way, the, I am the, way, the truth, and the life. Why is he saying, I am the truth? Because it is with God does not have perspective. Milk is red, you think it's blue, it doesn't matter, it is red. Because God's opinion, who's going to, I mean... If God decides this is good, even if you want to call it bad, it doesn't matter, it's good. So God does not release perspective. Revelation is truth. It's the way of life. It is the truth and the path to God's life. So God wants us to operate in his truth and in his understanding. So you never fight the devil in his realm. If the devil is drying your finances, you get small finances you hide. You just played in his realm. Oh, That's what he wanted you to do in the first place. Teachers, teachers. You are struggling with some finances. And God gives you, you, you get something small and you hide it. You just played what the devil wanted you to play. Because in order for me to come out of what I want, I must connect with something bigger than me. So I need to take the one I have and connect it to where I'm going. Amen. If I hide it, then I'm playing his game. Now he's saying, this one, I got you. This is why you find the woman when, when Elijah mm -hmm. had spoken and he said, listen, there will not be any rain. He cursed the earth. He said, no rain will come upon you until at my word. There was no rain. Remember, God did not say it. Elijah decided, these people, I will show you. There will be no rain until I say so. So you can imagine how many people are suffering. But God sent him to that widow who had a son. And Elijah goes to her. Remember, Elijah is being fed by ravens. So Elijah is not really in need. But God is sending him to somebody so that the woman can be saved. And her house can be saved. But when Elijah comes, he tells her, uh, woman, feed me. She said, uh, and he found her when she had her last cake to die. She said, but I'm cooking my last meal with my son so that we may die, eat and die. He said, listen, you give what you have, you will not lack in your house. So the way of God is always higher. Notice the Lord says, my ways are higher than yours. 
But somebody who does not understand that will deal with the things of the spirit like a natural man. And you find yourself in a deeper and a messed up, more, more messed up place. Because you're fighting the devil and dealing with the devil in terms of this world, which is where his rules are. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. You teach him. You teach him so it. you must understand as a child of God. Me, you, you should look at yourself and, and completely say to yourself, as a child of God, I will never, ever, ever deal with the devil mm. on his terms. Mm. I will take him to my world. Mm. Amen. You know, an eagle does not fight snakes on the ground. Yeah. He knows if I'm on the ground, the snake has an advantage. But when an eagle sees a snake is trying, it will just catch the snake and fly. He doesn't need to do anything. The altitude. The snake will pass out. He will get dizzy. The snake will not know what to do. By the time he releases him, the snake is dead. You are an eagle. I said you are an eagle. I said you are an eagle. I said you are an eagle. I am an eagle. Now look at this. The Bible says this. Those who wait upon the Lord, mm -hmm. what will he do first? Renew their strength. Mm -hmm. Then what will happen? They will run and not what? Faint. He, they will mount up what? Wings like eagles. Now these are levels that you deal with when you begin to walk with God. Amen. These are three different realms. That you begin your spiritual walk with God with. You remain in God. To wait on the Lord does not mean you sit quietly. No, it means being remaining, staying inside God. Believing God. What happens first is your strength becomes renewed. Whatever Satan would use to put you down will no longer put you down. Amen. When bills are supposed to put you down, they won't put you down. Amen. When people say no to you, it will no longer put you down. Amen. When people shut a door, it will no longer put you down. Amen. When they say you will never make it, you will never stop. Amen. When they're expecting you to be tired, you will not stop. Amen. You begin to become strong. Hallelujah. You begin to become strong. Hallelujah. Your prayer life is strengthened. Hallelujah. Your attitude is strengthened. Hallelujah. Everything about you receives power. May somebody receive power today. So, the first level, the first level deals with this realm. Listen to what the Lord Jesus said. He said, come to me all who are heavy, what? But labored, and I will give you rest. So, God is renewing your strength. When you give Jesus your burdens, now you are able to be refreshed. Amen. You are able to be renewed. You are able to renew your strength. Somebody who is carrying a load can never renew their strength. True. Because they are still laboring. True. They are still oh, carrying things. True. Even if you are resting and you are carrying something, you are still working. Some of you, you cannot sleep at night because you are still thinking about this tomorrow. Where will this come, come on, from? Papa. Where will that come from? How will I wear this? How will I pay for this? You are still heavy burdened. Teach. But the Bible says, whoever shall remain with Christ, why are you supposed to remain with him? Because he's the one who will give you rest. God will give you rest. He will allow you to relax. Yes. He will allow you to be rebuilt. Yes. He will allow you to be renewed. Yes. Ah, I thought I was talking to somebody. <laughs> let me tell you. Let me tell you. This, what I'm speaking to you is God talking. I am not the one Amen. talking. Amen. This is not even my, my message is right there. I haven't touched it. This is God talking. Amen. So listen to me carefully. You can never renew your strength if you're still laboring. That's true. How? Imagine when you're stressed out, you sleep, you wake up like you work the whole night. Yes. There's no energy in you. Yet the Bible says the Lord gives sleep to his beloved. Love, yes. If you're his beloved, why are you not sleeping? It means you're still heavy burdened. Teach it. Those who remain, those who remain in God, the first level is God renews your strength. Whatever the enemy was putting on you, as long as it is on you, you will fight him on, your term, on his terms. 
An eagle cannot fly if they, you put things on their wings. If you're trying to mount up, but there are things holding your wings, your wings have not even matured, but there are things that are holding your wings, you cannot mount up. When we were young, and, uh, and, and my older brother, Richie, used to really enjoy having, like, birds. So what he would do is, like, he would, uh, he would um, I don't know what you call them here, but uh, is it qu quail? Quail? Quail, uh, I think. He would go and get them, like, from, from like, uh, um, like, the woods and stuff. And what he would do, he would get one, and he would pluck out some wings from it, uh, some, some feathers from it, just a few, whereby it cannot fly. Then he would put water... With, with sugar in the water, and you will have some grains for the, for the bird. So the bird will live there. It will take the bird at least two to three weeks for them to regrow those wings. When the bird regrows the wings, the bird will fly away. But the next day, the bird will bring all his friends <laughs> to the place and say, listen, this place, the waters are sweet. There's always food. Uh, somebody is not catching me. This is what he would do. So all he needed was to get one. One. And just because he cannot fly, he will accustom him to water that is always there. You don't have to hunt for food. Food is just there. So that bird, when he's able to fly, and then he will build a language with the, with the bird. He will make a certain sound and the bird knows that food is ready. So the, wolf, the bird will just come out of the little place that it's staying and eat. Because it cannot fly, he's not caging it. So the bird thinks they are free. They just know they are unable to fly, but I'm being taken care of. When he's able to fly, he will go bring others. Within a month, we had over 60 birds in our house. My mom said, listen, listen, nah. <laughs> this, this, this is not happening anymore. When you come to God, God does not release you and fly. God will keep you, begin to feed you, yes. begin to give you water, yes. begin to accustom you to a new life. Yes, yes, he begins yes. to make you used to a new feel. Yes, yes, By yes. the time you're able to go, you know where your foundation is. Yes. Ah, I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Amen. Ah, so capture this. Capture this now. So you never fight the enemy where he is. Yes, that's true. But you meet God where you are. But you don't fight him where he is. God will always meet you at your level. That is why the Bible says, draw close to me and I will draw close to you. Notice God did not say, climb higher to me. Because he knows you cannot fly yet. I, I thought I was teaching some people. Notice God is saying, draw close to me and I will draw closer to you. Notice God is not saying, come up higher. Not yet. Because he knows you cannot fly yet. So God starts... With you where you are. That's why the Bible says the Lord is my shelter. He covers you where you are. Beyond the touch of the enemy first. And in that place he will groom you. When you are struggling with some things, he starts paying off some things miraculously. Your faith in him begins to grow. I think these people are more prophetic than this side. I think you guys are too blessed already. Maybe I am only sent to them and not to, you, to this side. I don't know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, the first level is he renews your strength. Amen. You know, rest has a way to heal people. It does. Some people that you're sick, you just need rest. I said, some of you people, you just need what? Rest. Some people, you just need rest. That is why in, 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 if it was up to your boss, you'll never get a vacation. <laughs> but by law, he is required to give you breaks. You are required, even if you're working a full day, you know there are times that you need a few reset moments. 
The reason you need them is because that moment gives you energy to work for more hours. Notice your break may be 30 minutes. But after 30 minutes, you can work four or five more hours. Rest has a way of rebuilding people. Yes. So the first thing that God will do, he will remove burdens from you. And give you rest. Those who wait upon the Lord. What will he do? He shall renew your strength. The next thing that God does. Because you have rested. Now you are able to run. And not faint. Somebody who has not rested has no ability to run. You know, for me, I stay up, I do a lot of late nights. And if I do too much of a late night and I have to wake up early, I'll still wake up, but you feel it. Ah, you will feel it. But the day you're well rested, you wake up, you know, you feel yourself. There is something in you that you can go and get so much done. Because there was rest. Yes. Now you have the ability to run and not faint. Today I decree and declare to somebody. By the time you leave this place today. You shall be able to run and never faint. You will never slow down. Listen, the Lord Jesus just told me this. Some of you, you think it's the spirit of delay. It's just because you don't have rest. So you're not able to finish tasks. Come on, teacher, Papa. This is not prophet. This is Lord speaking. Speak, Lord. I'm just a mouthpiece. Speak, Lord. <laughs> you are able now to accelerate. You are able to move faster. What used to take you 10 years to pray for, you start praying for one day, it is done. You pray for five minutes, you start seeing the manifestation. You start doing this, you start to see the changes. Something begins to happen. When you say fire, something catches fire. When you say be free, people be, begin to be free. Because now there is speed. There is speed in you. I was praying, my, 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 one of my daughters wrote me, uh, uh, everybody, some, some of you know Tia. How many people know Tia? Yeah, a few people know Tia. Tia messaged me a few weeks ago. She says, ah, Papa, I don't know what's happening. I just got tendonitis out of nowhere. My ears are just the whole time. And you know that thing has no cure. There's no way to fix it. So she's like, I don't know what's happening. This, this, this. I did not answer. I said, you know, for me, I always, if I speak to you, it means God wants me to talk now. Amen. If it's spiritual things, if you just, hey, Papa, Lo, hey, I, I'll talk. But when it comes to the things of God, I have to know. So God told me, wait. It's not time yet. Then when I got to do deliverance week, God tells me now when I'm live. He says, uh, uh, call, call your daughter. I said, Tia, where are you? Call now. I'm going to pray for you. Within two minutes, left. Uh, somebody is not catching. Hallelujah. That is the anointing with speed. Hallelujah. That is the anointing of speed. That is speed. God can do it just like that. That is speed. Let me tell you something. A snake gives birth to what? To what? Snakes. Uh -uh. To what? Snakes. A lion gives birth to what? Lions. So a prophet births what? Prophets. You are prophetic. I receive. You are prophetic. I receive. Thank there you, is God. a reason why God sent you here. There is a reason why God sent you here. You may think you are regular, but you are prophetic. So catch this. What is the next step? The Bible says, then you begin to mount up your wings like an eagle. Notice it, say, it is not saying you have become an eagle. It is saying you begin to mount up your wings like an eagle. 
Meaning when people see you, they will not know if you are a prophet. They will call you prophet. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm saying you're prophetic. You are prophetic. I will see. Teach it, Papa. I said you're prophetic. Your insight will change. That's why he's saying you will mount up wings like an eagle. Meaning when you are flying and an eagle is flying, there will be no difference. Only God will look and say, this one is prophet. This one is prophetic. You are prophetic in the name of Jesus. Wherever you will go, you will have insight. Amen. You will know where to step. You will know where to go. Amen. You will know what to do because the Lord shall speak to you. The Lord shall lead you. You cannot be a sheep that does not know the master's voice. That is why the master will spend more time with his sheep. So that the sheep will know the voice. When you go to him, in the times that he's giving you rest, he's tuning you to know his voice. So when God speaks, you know God is speaking when no one else knows that God is speaking. Ah, somebody shout glory. Glory. When you begin now to mount up your wings as an eagle, remember, that, that so when you begin to fly, you have entered now the prophetic realm. Somebody say the prophetic realm. The prophetic realm. Now, the power of God is not in doing, but it is in word. It is in the word that comes out of your mouth. The meat of the power of God is in the word that will come out of your mouth. An eagle, the strength of an eagle, the strength of somebody prophetic, is rooted in their ability to speak. You cannot break a curse. Unless you have become prophetic. Amen. Amen. No, this is a truth I'm telling you. You don't, I will show you by scripture. You don't just simply break a curse by saying the blood. Mm -mm. I'll show you by in the Bible today. Amen. When you enter the prophetic realm, now you are able to deal with words. That have also been directed to you. Because this is now a fight of a different level now. Now you have completely entered the spiritual battle now. You see, when the devil, when, when the children of Israel, in the time of the Lord Jesus... They saw the Lord Jesus casting out demons. They said, who is this guy? They even now made up a theory. They said, this guy is casting out devils mm. by the power of Beelzebub. Mm -hmm. Notice they even knew the name of a specific demon. Remember, Beelzebub is not Lucifer. Be Beelzebub is an apprentice of the devil. <laughs> it's called the prince of demons. They know them by name. They knew Beelzebub. Mm -hmm. they know Apollyon but they said who is this that can deal with them in their realm he must be using them so they know there is a place that evil spirits operate that demonic forces operate but them themselves they could not see that there is a higher dimension greater to deal with that so they said the only way we can take Jesus down is to say him he's using them hallelujah hallelujah Go to your Bibles real quick. Hmm. Genesis chapter 12 verse 3. 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 Amen. Are you there, Bishop? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Read it. And I will bless them that bless thee. Uh-huh. And curse him that curseth thee. One and more time. I will, and I will bless them that bless thee mm -hmm. and curse them that curseth thee. Notice what God is saying. Can we all read it together? One, two, three. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. One more time. 
and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. Notice, not anywhere God said there, I will remove the curse from you. Maybe you need to read it one more time. Read it one more time. <laughs> and I will bless them that bless thee, uh -huh. and curse him that curseth thee. Notice the Bible is saying this. God is saying, whoever blesses you, I will bless them. But the one who curses you, I will also release a curse against them. But notice God is not dealing with a curse on you. I, 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 am, am I helping somebody? This is God saying, he's saying, whoever comes and says, you will make it, God will make them make it. Amen. Whoever says you will not make it, God will also make them not make it. But he did not say, I will block what they said and send, them to, send it to them. He said, what they did to you, I will also pay back. But paying back does not mean I am out of the place I'm not supposed to be. Amen. Uh, maybe this word is, is, is it okay if I continue? Yes. Listen to carefully to what God is saying. God is making a promise to his servant Abraham. He's telling him, Abraham, the earth will be blessed by you. Because of you, this earth, your descendants will be a blessing. There is nothing you will do that will not rise up. Anyone who dare say anything against you, they have a problem with me. If they curse you, I will curse them. If they bless you, I will bless them. Notice God is reversing unto them whatever they are sowing into you. Hey. But God is not removing it from you. He's just saying my retaliation will be based on what they do to you. Do you know the children of Israel, to go into Babylon, it was a curse. It wasn't God's will. God permitted it. How many times did God try to take them out of that path? He's telling them, what is wrong with you people? Why are you stiff naked? Why are you doing this? I don't want you to go there. I don't want you to go there. But when they went into Babylon, he said, listen, I've raised him to come and capture you. But whatever he has done to you, I will do it to him. <laughs> but remember, they still suffered slavery. Man, that part. God says, after this amount of years, <laughs> after this amount of years, I will redeem you. I will take you out. But I will also give him what he did to you. But remember, you still went through it. The point is, how do I not go through it? Yes, 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 yes. Maybe this may whoever, I pray that God will open your ears to enter into this place. So you never, you cannot fight a battle you don't know. Amen. That is why we have believers in church, prayer warrior. People come for you to you to pray for prayer. They get blessed. You, you are still not getting blessed. But they're getting blessed. They came with a seed. God multiplied their seed. But you, you're like, but God, I've been praying for people. People are receiving breakthrough, but me, why? <laughs> you are bound by something. You are under something. Ah, My people perish because of lack of knowledge. Not because they are not Christians. Not because they don't pray. Not because they are not going to heaven. Not because they are not filled with the Holy Ghost. All this is good, but they don't have knowledge of spiritual things. They are getting destroyed. Amen. Jacob is born. Jacob did not choose his name, but he was given a name. But his name was not anything positive. It was a curse. His parents named him because of what he displayed at birth. They said, this guy's name is Jacob. 
His spiritual name was a different name. But his father and mother gave him another name. That was not the name that God actually wanted to call him. Because he was a promised one by God. He was the one the promise of God was with. But when he was coming out, because he wanted to be first, it was the anointing of his calling that was pushing him. But his parents saw it to be wrong. They said, this one, ah, uh, you, Jacob. Trickster, supplanter. So it did not matter that the hand of the Lord was on Jacob. Everywhere he, where he went, that name followed him. It did not matter that he was traveling. He laid down in the middle of nowhere. Angels began to ascend and descend upon him. He even built an altar. He saw in the spirit and he knew God is surely with me. Even if I am here, God is with me. But he was still under a curse. That name was still following him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Papa. He got to a strange land. He got received. He found a woman that he loves. He wants to marry her. The father said, work for me for seven years and you have her. He worked so hard, put in work. When it came time to marry, they gave him the wrong one under a curse. The name was still having an effect over him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that name was following him, even the ones that were, he was with, they were tricking him also. So something that was supposed to be seven years turned into 14. Because they gave him the wrong one. Then he had to labor again for another seven for them to give him the right one. May you get it right by, for, on the first try. Hallelujah. May whatever you do, may you get it right on the first try. May whatever you lay your hands on, may you get it right on the first try. I receive, Lord. First try. Now watch this, watch this. God begins to bless him. But because of the curse that was following him, the father-in-law says, ah, you, 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 this, this sheep that are white are mine. No, 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 but the spotted ones were you. No, 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 those ones are mine. A curse will make you every time you progress, somebody will take from you. Every time you want to multiply, somebody will take from you. So here he is. Now, he has to intercede. Imagine you worked for something. Now you have to pray concerning it again. God had to visit him and give him a, 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 a dream. Give him a vision. Tell him, now, put this in front of your, your animals when they eat. Then they will become like this and things will change like this. So again, now you remember, sheep will not give birth to each other every day. It takes time. For animals to multiply, remember there's mating season in the animal kingdom. Meaning there is a season for them to multiply and to get more and to become more. So here they, he is again, he has to wait for a season Concerning something that is his, but because he's under a curse, he has no defense. He has to work again. So he's here working concerning something that already is his. He's fighting for something that is his, but because he has no voice. Remember, the ego realm deals with a voice. Deals with a word. But because he's still not out of the woods, he's still working as Jacob. He's still operating on the realm that was given him. He has to labor again to prove himself. May God remove you from having to prove yourself to people. Hallelujah. I receive. May God remove you from having to prove yourself to people. I receive. Having to show people that you belong. I receive. Having to show people that you can win. Having to show people that this is your place. May God remove you from that in the name of Jesus. Amen, I receive. Notice. The light that had come into the world never had to prove himself. Yes. The Lord Jesus never had to prove himself for, to nobody. 
Because he was not under any curse. He said, I am the true light. He had a prophetic name for himself. He did not call himself what other people called him. He did not allow the names that people adapted to him to influence him. He knew, I am the Messiah. I am the Christ. I am the light that has come into the world. What does a light do? A light shines. So whatever he did, he attracted attention. No matter what he touched, it grew. Wherever he goes, his name was spreading. May your name be great in the name of Jesus. I receive. Thank you, May Lord. your name be great in the name of Jesus. I receive my great The name. Bible says, if my people who are called by my name, you have his name, may you begin to shine I and rise in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Now, now, look at this. The Lord now, his life is accelerating. Yeah. But you're looking at Jacob. Jacob is still struggling. Then he gets all the sheep thing sorted. He's like, now I have to go. His father-in-law is starting to beg him. No, just stay. I'll give you more. Because he understood that the blessing of God was with this man. But this man is not benefiting from the blessing. It is people around him that are benefiting from the blessing. Amen. For too long, people have benefited from you. For too long, people have gained from you. It is time that you begin to gain from yourself. Hallelujah. May this word, whoever will shout, yeah, may you receive it. Yeah. Listen. You have to be tired. It is an abomination. Remember, whoever responds to the word is the one that gets it. Amen. If you stay cute, next year you'll be there, would have moved up. I'm talking to somebody. Remember, I am a prophet. Whatever I come to tell you is what God spoke to me to tell you. Amen. I don't come, I don't come with a pre-planned message. Not, nothing wrong with that. But whatever I speak, I speak from the heart of God. What the Lord Jesus has put in my heart. So here you're seeing now Jacob. Now he has to fight again, beg his way out. Then finally they let him live. Bondage wants to hold him, bribe him. But some people, because you may not know that you carry a greater destiny, you will settle. Because conditions are better, but you forget that they have been tricking you your whole life. Somebody said, Lord, open my eyes. Lord, open my eyes. So now look at this. Jacob lives. But he has a problem because he's afraid of his brother. Now remember, the one who had the promise of God is coming, out, is coming back with some blessing. But he has no peace. Because he's not sure if he will be received on the other side. But the one who did not receive a portion that was great from God has more wealth than the one that is anointed by God. When Jacob is meeting his brother, Jacob is, is trying to bribe his brother so that his brother can, he's even calling him, my Lord, you received this gift from your servant. He said, listen, man, I have too much of this. I don't need it. What does that mean? It means Jacob was under a curse. Because the one who is supposed to have less mm -hmm. is telling you, listen, don't give to me. I'm good. You need it. Now, it doesn't mean that Jacob was poor. But to what God called him to be. Remember, Esau was supposed to be his servant. According to the blessing. He was supposed to be his servant. But he's coming back saying, my Lord. There are some people you're calling boss. They should be working for you. May today something change. Hallelujah. I said, may today something change. I receive. May today something change. I receive it. There are some people you're answering to. They should be the ones reporting to you. You are so talented. You are so qualified. You have degrees. You have everything. 
but you're answering to somebody who doesn't have anything. Somebody said, God release fire on the devil. God release fire on the devil. It's an abomination. It's wrong. It's wrong. How can I be qualified by God, but somebody is using me? I'm getting a compensation, but I am really being used. Because my ability should put me where this man is who has no clue what they are doing. They are using my knowledge to remain where they are. Jacob is in a situation now. When Abraham had gone and saved certain people, including his own house, including his own house, kings, three kings came to see Abraham. They said, Abraham, they brought him offerings. They brought him things. Abraham said, listen, <laughs> take your gifts. I don't want you to say you made Abraham rich. Imagine three kings have come together to give to him. He's saying, this is a small gift. Keep it. I don't want you to claim that you made me rich. I'm good. If somebody is saying, I don't want you to say you made me rich, it means they're already rich. Amen. I receive. Take it. Imagine. It means that Abraham had no problem. When he came to the financial side, he was delivered. When he came out of his people, he was not carrying that situation. Lot was carrying that situation, but he was benefiting from the relationship with Abraham. So now the key here is this. How do I come out of this curse? You notice his life, Jacob changes when God comes and renames him. Before God names him, he's still plateaued. He can't go beyond a certain place. Some of you, you have been play, praying, but you have plateaued. You can't seem to break beyond a certain point. Teacher, Papa. It doesn't matter if you fast or you pray. You are noticing that you have what? Plateaued. You are not breaking beyond a certain point. Abraham left his father and mother's house. There was a promise to greatness. But until God changed his name, he could not enter into that place. Isaac could not come. Wealth could not increase. Because his name did not mean what God wanted him to be. A curse, a curse is not simply, you won't make it. Is what are you responding to? Is what are you responding to? What are you responding to? Let me show you a scripture. Let me show you a scripture. Go to your Bibles. Hmm. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. Hebrews 12, 24. Amen. Hebrews 12, 24. Amen. Are you there? Yes, sir. Read it. Uh -huh. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of the sprinkling that mm. speaketh better things than that of Abel. Read it one more time. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, uh -huh. and to the blood of the sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Now, notice this. The blood of Abel has a voice. Yes. Try it. Come on, talk. The blood of your father and mother have a voice. Yes. 
The blood of your great grandmother has a voice. Yes. The blood of your great 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 has a voice. It is speaking. Yes. It is speaking. The Bible is saying that the blood of Jesus speaks better things mm. yes. than the blood of Abel. Mm -hmm. Notice what the Bible is saying. Meaning the blood of Abel was still crying, murderer, killer, Cain, you murderer, you killer. You will die also. You killed me. Because when you read in scripture, it tells you in the book of Revelation, there are people who are crying in heaven right now that their blood has been shed. They are saying, God, Avengers, kill them. They killed us. Kill them. So if your grandmother called your father foolish, even though they are long gone, that blood is still saying, you foolish. It's running inside of you, you foolish. But why is that voice still, why is that blood still speaking? Notice what the Bible is saying. It's saying, the blood of Jesus speaks better things. Christ, amen. The blood of Jesus is speaking better things. So the only way you silence the wrong voice is to speak better things. Amen. You don't break a curse by rebuking, by, by canceling. No. You can't. How many curses have you canceled? You're still there. <laughs> I'm talking to people. I cancel. You can cancel the plans of the devil. But you cannot cancel a curse. When somebody is cursing you, God is already cursing them. But how do I remove a curse from me? Somebody may have been angry at you and said something and you reacted. They just named you. You received the curse because they provoked a reaction. Let me tell you, the worst thing that you can ever do is get a prophet angry. Ah! <laughs> it's bad. It's Amen. really bad. Amen. Yeah, it's the worst thing you can do. Terrible. You know, it takes me a while to get to a place where I am upset. But remember, even in my anger, I won't do, you know, I won't, you know, there, there are certain things that you don't do when you become a Christian. Become a believer, but you will get upset. Yes. Anger is normal. Yes. Joy is normal. Happiness is normal. To be angry is also normal. Spirit of anger is a different thing from being angry. Even God gets upset. That's why the Bible says, even in your anger, do not sin. If you want to make the best prayer, be at the extreme of emotions. True. When you're extremely happy, praise God and see what will happen. Yes. When you're extremely, the devil tried, you begin to do warfare. You will do the best warfare you have ever done in your life. True. Because whenever the anointing flows with emotion, it needs your entire being to engage. If all of you does not participate, you will never release power in what you say. It's not just about saying, I am blessed. But when you, I am blessed, something moved inside of you. Hallelujah. You are saying that you are blessed. I am blessed. If you hear something God says, you say, I, 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 that is me. It means it has done something in you. Amen. All of you has received it. But when God says you are blessed, you just say, mm. David says, I was glad when I was told. Let us. He knew everything with him was an extreme. Cabro Soto. 
Makuda Liga Bay. Now listen to this. So you do not break a curse by shouting, why? I plead the blood. I plead the blood that speaks better things. Now listen now, you know. <coughs> Let me show you a scripture, then I will go deep. <laughs> ah. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. Isaiah 54, 17. Isaiah 54, 17. Isaiah 54, 17. Amen. Amen. Are you there? Amen. Yeah, let's let's run it. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Now notice he said what? No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. What does this mean? It means that they can form a weapon. So the problem is when you see a weapon pointed, come son, stand up. Please, I'm showing, showing you an example. Okay? Let's say this was a bazooka. I won't say gun, bazooka. Let me make it extreme. I say, you, you already lift up, lift up your hands. Say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, take anything you want. You see, they formed a weapon. You surrendered yeah, yeah, yeah. because you did not know that they will form it, but it will not prosper. Right, right, right. Ah. When you see a weapon, you shout, the devil has gotten me. But a weapon does not mean that it has prospered. The Bible did not say that they will not have a weapon. The Bible says whatever weapon they use, that weapon may be poverty. That weapon may be, I don't care what it may be. They will form a weapon. You will see the weapon. But it will never do anything to you. That weapon may be cancer. That weapon prosper. may be high blood pressure. It will not that, prosper. that may be limitation. It, will not it may prosper. be sickness. It will not prosper. None of those things will not It will never prosper. Hallelujah. It's, it's, so the problem is people see weapons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People see weapons, they run. They see a weapon, they run. The devil uses it to label them. Spirit of fear, I'm just afraid they labeled you. Read it again. Now listen. Uh -huh. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Why? And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. Notice this. Notice. God is saying every weapon formed, first of all, it will not prosper. But the one that can catch you is the word that will rise against you in judgment. Mm. If you read, let what the devil says slide, it got you. Mm. That's good. Notice he did not say the word that rises against you in judgment, I will stop it. He said their weapon is my responsibility. Amen. Because he said you, I said you are more than a conqueror. Amen. I said you are above and not be be Amen. below. I said they would drink deadly things. You would not do anything to them. Amen. It so is it is God's duty to block that. Amen. But when it comes to Come the on. weapon of the mouth. Come on. Remember God is the word. Yes. God needs a mouth to speak. Amen. Amen. So if you are God's mouth. And you don't speak. It is your responsibility, not his. Amen. That's too good. So it says, every word that shall rise up against you in a judgment, thou shall condemn. The problem is, you are spending time saying, devil, fire, fire. You don't have trials. Say, you. So you thought you could just do this. Today I sentence you to this. No, I think I'm going to give this to I'm going to, I think, uh, 
Maybe I'm teaching the wrong people. Notice what God is saying. He's saying, you. He did not say Angel Gabriel. He did not say Michael. He did not say Uriel. He did not say Reuel. He didn't say mention any of it. He said, you. You will condemn. You will condemn. Meaning that if they shoot words to you, mm, yes. and you don't condemn it, yes. it got you. So it's not always, I cover myself, I cover myself. Why don't you stop them from doing what they're doing? So you don't have to cover yourself. That's fear. Yes, yes. Let me tell you something. Let me be honest with you. When I go to sleep, I don't need to pray. I know you're shocked. I know you think that I'm always, ah, sha, ba, ba, ba. Nah. <laughs> I operate with a knowing. Amen. There are things I no longer do those things that I used to do. And I was, Father, now I say, cover this whole compound. <laughs> the Bible says, I will set my angels to take charge of thee. Amen. I know I'm protected. Amen. I just go to sleep. I know they are, they are there. I know I am surrounded. I know my house is kept. I don't need to worry. I am relaxed. I know. I don't need to pray. I know. I know. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. You try to sneak into my house, I will see you before you even thought of coming in. No, I'm telling you the truth. I will see you from a distance. Well, this is true. There was a, there was a, 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 a when, I, when I moved into my home, a few, like, uh, I, think, I think the first or second month, I think it was the second month, uh, before, I think it was the second month. So, because where we live, like, the homes are a little bit a distance and they are, like, big uh, b uh, properties, but there's one of our neighbors that he's a movie director, so he's never there. He always, like, travels and, and he's back at his house maybe twice or three times a year because he has other homes. So, Amen. some people scoped his property. <laughs> I will see. <laughs> now, some people scoped his property and they realized that nobody is there. So they, they snuck in and, and they took some petty stuff. Then they tr waited a few weeks to see if no one also was at our place. So they came to the back, back one of the, the back doors, and they tried to, before even my dog saw them, I saw them. Amen. Before they even, I saw them long distance. They just said, in the mighty name of Jesus, they were, <laughs> my dog's already now, that's when my dog's now got up, ooh, looking. <laughs> From a distance. Look at your neighbor, say, nothing can touch me. Nothing can touch I am me. heavily protected. I am heavily protected. I am heavenly defended. I am heavenly defended. So there are certain things, there are certain things that are no longer worry. Amen. I mean, now, obviously, that was like a strange occurring in that place because things like that don't happen. So anyway, you know, you, you, we got home security system anyway, whatever. But for me personally, ha, you have to be out of your mind to get me by surprise. Yeah. <laughs> so there is something about knowing your place. The Bible says, Wherever you set your feet is blessed. Amen. I don't need to go out to a place and start claiming I bless this. My feet have touched yes. the blessed one. Yes. The Amen. blessed one has arrived. Amen. Everything is blessed. Uh, hallelujah. So you don't need, you see, some things you pray for because you don't know. Yeah. Already where you have been established. Yeah. 
He said, wherever you shall lay your feet, you shall possess. Some yes, of yes, you, yes. you just need to go to a new neighborhood. With houses hey. you like. Start strolling in the hey. neighborhood. Say, hi, neighbor. Hi, hi, hi. You are possessing the land. Ah, somebody shout glory. glory. Now, look. These are all forms of prayer. These are all forms of prayer. But you think prayer is... There is a place for that. And it is right. It should be done. But that's not all prayer is. Prayer is communication with God. Meaning my footsteps can be talking to God. Hallelujah. My desire is a communication to God. So we have many ways to do this. That's why the Bible says, it, it says it clearly. It says it perfectly. Our weapons. There are many it's not weapon, weapons. So, what you need inside of you is to understand this. A weapon cannot prosper. But, every word spoken, don't say I don't receive it. That is not condemning. If somebody says something, you say, no, that one, I don't receive it. No, spiritually, you received it because you reacted. <laughs> so, you judge it and condemn it, you stopped it. You don't condemn it, it doesn't matter. You say, I don't receive it. That's not judgment. The judge will say, listen. You're going in for three months. You say, I don't receive it. <laughs> the police will still put <laughs> cuffs on you, tell you, let's go. <laughs> but I didn't receive it. They are still pulling you. <laughs> I did not receive it. They are still pulling you. <laughs> I don't receive it. <laughs> ah, Jesus. Now, read it again. I want you to understand this clearly, the best way you can. Read it again. Uh -huh. No weapon uh -huh. that is formed against thee shall prosper. Uh -huh. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Notice it says every tongue. Every tongue. Every tongue. What does the Bible say? Life and death is in what? Power of tongue. So it doesn't matter if that tongue is the tongue of a witch. The tongue of a wizard. Mm. You have power over their tongue. You have the ability to condemn it and judge it. Amen. Now read the next verse. What does it say? This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Notice God is saying, this is the heritage. Yeah, Lord. How did we come out of sin? Did we just say we are not sinners? No. We said, Lord, I thank you that I am saved. You had to condemn the word that yes. says that you are not saved. Yes. The reason why you confess with your mouth is because you are condemning the judgment that was passed upon you. Yes. That is why God does not come and make you confess. You confess of your own will. Jesus paid the price. But for you to break the curse, you have to make a confession. You have to say a particular thing. I am born again. Amen. Remember, we were dead in our sin. But instead of saying now, I am alive, you say no. Because you are not who you used to be, what do you say? I am born again. Amen. Thank God I'm born again. My sins have been removed. I am a new person. Notice... This is a prophetic declaration against what said, you are dead, you are going to hell, there is no life in you. I think I'm, t I don't know if you are learning why. Amen. I don't know if it's making sense. Yes. 
That's why sometimes when you go to people and say, just confess the Lord Jesus as a savior, they don't know why they are confessing. By grace, people will feel compelled to follow the Lord, but they don't really know the extent of what they are doing. A, a, a born again can curse you. I was talking to my son, uh, uh, Mike, and we were talking about something. Uh, uh, we were discussing uh, um, uh, uh, some music things that we're going to work on for the church. And he was telling me a story about uh, a church that he played for a long time ago and the happenings in the church. And it was really, really funny. But it was funny in the sense that we were like, how can Christians be like this? Mm. Christians curse each other all the time. All the time. They will say things about one another. They will do this, they will do that. What do you think you're doing? You don't come out of poverty by saying, I, I rebuke poverty. Let me tell you how the curse of poverty works. The curse of poverty is not a spirit that will block your resources. It's a spirit that controls the mind. Makes you see that you will never have more than enough. So you cannot break it by saying, I break you, I break you. Because it's a curse. It's operating with the blood. Something is speaking. You will not go beyond. You will not go beyond. You will not come out of this. You will remain in this. You will stay in this. It's controlling you. The only way you can come out of it is by saying, ah, I am prosperous. Amen. I have more than enough. Amen. I live in a nice place. Amen. You are changing and condemning what was speaking against you. If no voice will rise, there will be no change. If no voice will rise, there will be no change. That is why we declare a blessing on people. We say you are blessed. Go and prosper. We are saying something so that whatever was said against you can be broken. The devil wants many of you, some people are even watching at home, some people will tell you, ah, you don't need a prophet, you just need the word of God. It's the most foolish thing. Is God a fool to say I have ordained prophets? It's not, are you getting what I'm saying? You need somebody that has the power and the anointing to declare something different. That actually has the authorized mouth of God to change something that goes far in the blood. Curses are not broken by I rebuke it, I break it. Fire, fire, fire. I return it to the sender. God already does that. But you need to replace it with a blessing. The Lord Jesus found a fig tree. And the fig tree did not give him fruit when he wanted. Imagine the fruit, the tree was not even in season. But Jesus was offended that he could go to eat and he could not provide. Yes. He said, no one will eat from you. The tree died. Some of you, your businesses are not doing good. You are just praying, God bless my business. You need to go have a conversation with your business. Yeah. Amen. Say you. Now those who are clapping, clap like you mean it. Amen. No, I'm serious. You are doing, you know, <laughs> everything. Look at your name. This is a lesson that the Lord Jesus taught me. No, not a human being. The Lord Jesus himself told me. The Lord Jesus himself told me. He told me, son, everything in creation has ears to hear. Everything has ears to hear. This was the Lord speaking to me. 
That is when I started performing the miracles of growing limbs and things like that because I understood that somebody's hand may listen to me. Somebody's foot will listen to me. Listen to what the Lord Jesus said. The Lord Jesus said this. He said, the Bible says, he sent his word and healed them. Now, how did he send his word? Who heard it? No, the body part that was sick heard. Jesus said, hey, that leg be healed. Somebody's on the other side of town. That word went and the leg said, I receive. The leg was healed. Because everything has ears to hear. May your finances hear your voice. May that sickness hear your voice. May your business hear the voice. May your situation hear the voice of God. He sent his word. And his word went. And wherever it was sent, it heard it. You, you want to pray for something that you need to talk to. You need to go into your business. Get into your business and you start talking. A. I did not create you so that you're not fruitful. Amen, amen. Do you want me to curse you and die? Amen, amen. I am telling you today, I am giving you 24 hours. Amen. I want this phone, new phone, begin to ring with customers. Amen. I am telling you now, you know what you have done? You have just released angels to be on assignment. Amen. Because the Lord said, whatever you shall lay your hands on, shall what? Prosper. Meaning there are angels that are waiting for you to speak so that they can get active. But you are praying where you should be commanding. Ah, Father, Father, just do something new in our business, Lord. I am tired, Lord. Ah, you roll on the ground. <laughs> Take your, your bank card. Look at your ATM card. Say, hey, may this be the last time minus ever. Amen. From today, Amen. I want to see... Seven figures, eight figures, that will be your portion. Amen. This negative is no longer your portion. But if you're not spiritual, you just relax. I know we have a lot of people in film here. Take, can I borrow your book? Take, take your resume. Take your, 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 what do you call it? The headshot. Say you, when I send you out, whoever looks at you, you will speak and you will say, I am the right one for the role. You will say no one else can say and do anything better. I am the qualified one. Now go and prosper. But you, let me, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Haven't you ever seen things that speak to you? I know there are people who are blessed to buy homes, but I pray those who have not, may you buy homes. I receive. When I was looking for houses, the house, the, the house that I bought actually was not even the house I liked. Because I was shown the picture, did not, the picture did not speak to me. I looked at other places, but the realtor said, I just want you to come and see this one place. When I got there, I said, ha! Ah! <laughs> they all said, welcome home. <laughs> I said, listen, this is the one. Amen. He said, do you know I showed you this picture and you guys rejected it? I said, no, 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 this is the one. The Lord Jesus is in the boat. He says, fish, jump in the net. Fish starts jumping in the net. But you, 
You just want to pray about things that have declaration written all over it. When you have gone to buy that car, the car spoke to you. Amen. The car spoke to you. Amen. You looked at it, you said, I like this reddish, yes, reddish, sure. reddish. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just prophesied to her. <laughs> You wanted to say something. It's you true. wanted to give you a vision of how you sat inside it's true, it. It's true. I remember when my son, the bishop, hey. <laughs> I call him, <laughs> I won't say the name. <laughs> May that name just come in your spirit. <laughs> he had this car, a company car, that he loved so much. I said, Bishop. <laughs> And we move on. <laughs> Say, you know what, Papa? I'll finally do it. The next time I saw him, he did like an extra jump. It's true. Even me, I was so shocked. It is true. He said, you know, Papa, when you sit inside it, it just feels us. <laughs> things need to start speaking to you. Hallelujah. If things can speak to you, you need to speak to things. Hallelujah. You need to speak to things. Yeah. Touch your neighbor, say neighbor. neighbor. From, today, From today, you need to speak to things. You need to speak to things. You need to speak to things. Hallelujah. Now, notice, if we can call things to be, that is true. If we can call things to be, can you not talk to it? Was it not him? First of all, everything you have in your life is because you spoke of it. That is true. If you have never spoken it, you never, I promise you, everything you have is by reason of your word. That is true. You are where you are right now in your life because of what you speak. That is true. Amen. Whatever you speak with conviction, notice the Lord Jesus said this. He says, whosoever shall speak, he did not say because you are the most anointed. He said, whosoever shall speak and not doubt in their heart. Yes, yes, yes. That is That's the principle. It. Not it. doubt in their heart. That is the key. But there are people, when bills are looking strange, you say it without doubt in your heart, man, I'm not going to make it. With conviction. You just cursed yourself. You need to look at yourself in the mirror. Say, hey, handsome. Hey, beautiful. Hey, you will saying? never have financial problems again. Amen. Amen. I am prophesying to you. Amen. Yes, you who is looking at me. I am speaking to you. Yes. But some of you will say that is not true. Yet David is sitting down talking to himself. Saying, praise the Lord, oh my soul. Forget not his benefits. He is talking to himself not to forget the best. He is he's prophesying to himself. Some things you don't have is not because you don't pray. You don't speak to yourself. Yeah. You don't release a prophetic blessing on yourself. The Lord Jesus was doing it all the time. He said, no one takes my life from me, but I lay it down. Do you know why he did that? He took power from them from killing him. Amen. He took, he disarmed them of killing him. He said, no one takes my life from me. I lay down of my own accord and I will raise it up again. He took power from them from killing him. Amen. I receive. That is why he arranged his own arrest. He set it up. Amen. He's eating with Judas. He tells Judas, do what you must yes. do quickly. Yes. And a demon entered Judas, meaning the demon was waiting. For an opportunity. And Jesus opened the opportunity so he can do it. Meaning the devil had no power to catch Jesus and make Jesus get arrested and killed. Hey. No, no, no. I want you to capture this. Judas has plans to destroy Jesus the whole time. But the devil is not able to enter him because Jesus has not opened the door. Hey. After Jesus eats with him, he dips his, he says, 
what you must do, do quickly. He was not talking to Judas. He was talking to the spirit that was influencing Judas. The Bible says immediately the devil entered him. And he went and sold Jesus. Said yes. Yeah, he's over there. I know where he is. I know what he did. If you even look at how he betrayed him, it doesn't even make sense. And then he went. He said, whoever I kiss is the one. He goes and kisses Jesus and they arrest him. Doesn't make any kind of sense. Jesus orchestrated the whole thing. The night before, he went to the temple, broke everything. And disappeared. Knowing very well that the, the, the men of God had something to do with the markets that were in the church. Yes. He provoked them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all a setup. But you read the Bible, you don't understand that Jesus is setting them up. It was all a setup. It was all a setup. He's the one who made them kill him. You know, when people talk about the Lord, they talk about him like, oh, what a painful death he suffered. How could they do that? Oh, blessed Lord, what kind of foolish prayer. Father, I thank you that you took the cross for me. Amen. Father, I thank you that you chose to die for me. Amen. That is the correct prayer. Because you know he did it because he wanted to. Amen. That is true. So we think we are holy with certain things, yet it's like foolishness. God is rolling his eyes. He's saying, look at this one. So you think that they killed me. You don't understand that I laid my life down for you. It's a big difference. Amen. They are telling him, defend yourself. Pilate is telling him, defend yourself. He's saying, I don't need to defend myself from what? He said, if this was my kingdom, they would not give me up. Ah, but he's so confused. He's saying like, what, what, what do you want? He's saying, ah, <laughs> what you must do, just do it. Remember, the sin is not on you. The man is confused. He's not defending himself. He's not fighting. He's not. He's okay. They take him to Herod. He keeps his mouth shut. He's not mounting up a defense. Because he laid his life down. He did it himself. So when you want to ask, oh, how could you, Lord? That should be a praise, big yes, time. Yes, yes. Your cry should be enjoy how blessed, how good is this God that would just go to the grave for me. <laughs> Don't regret him going to the cross. Thank God he went to the cross. Amen. I do not regret him going to the cross. That's the reason why we are saved. Amen. The only way you break and reverse a curse, you must condemn. You must condemn. You must condemn. What the devil has used people or he has said concerning you, you must condemn it. Some of you, you need to go home and change your names. Ah, it's a prophetic word. L listen to your word. Go find the meaning of your word. If it is strange, change it. If it does not speak of where you're going and who you must be, change it. You know, some of us, we were given names that you don't even know where they came from. Find out what does this mean. Ah, the name is not prophetic. I know I'm supposed to be billionaire. This name does not reflect that. Let me find a name that matches this. Hey. No, I'm telling you the truth. I'm supposed to be here, but this name is plateauing me. New parents, pray to God to give your children names. Amen. Don't just give them names that are just, I like that name. It is spelled so cool. No. <laughs> is it going to take them where they're supposed to be? That is the truth. God is naming his son before he comes into the world. Because he knew if he left it to the world, they would destroy him. 
by the name that he carries. He had to make sure he drilled it even in his parents to give him a specific name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand up. Let's reverse and Hallelujah. change these curses. Yes, Lord. Charlie Briggs.